South Africa's Western Cape. In the range of a hundred miles, a visitor can pass through a dazzling variety of climates. Lush valleys give way to semi-arid mountain ranges of the Cape Fold Belt. From there, arid scrublands of the Karoo Basin unfurl beneath an intense and unremitting sun. Brutal winds whip across the highways, thrashing at passing cars with walls of sand that grind and corrode. It's in this region, so rich in the drama of the natural world, that an elite team of Porsche engineers has gathered. They've chosen this place, at the southwesterly tip of the African continent, to carry out final testing before the debut of an all-new vehicle. It's a car whose storied history places extraordinary demands on those who build it. It must represent the highest engineering standards and perform flawlessly, even in the world's most diverse and unforgiving climates. That car is the 2012 Porsche 911. In another hemisphere, more than 10,000 miles away, a second team of Porsche engineers carries out similar tests in very different conditions. It's a typical February day in a secret location at the Arctic Circle, and the temperature dips to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Much like the heat and punishing sandstorms of the Western Cape, the Arctic Circle's bitter cold adds a brutal layer of complexity as engineers push test vehicles to their operating extremes. Despite the conditions, both teams must coordinate their efforts to complete this critical development project safely. The clock is ticking. The team only has a few months until the car's global debut. Arctic Circle engineers connect to the South Africa team by a satellite data link. As the teams push the limits of the new Porsche 911 in these extreme environments, they share and discuss their findings. One might ask why a car must operate in conditions most owners would never dream of living in, let alone driving in. The reason is simple. Porsche is adamant in believing the measure of a Porsche is its ability to perform just as well here as it would on a German Autobahn, Interstate Highway in the U.S., or anywhere else a car's owner might be. This is the Porsche standard. Back in South Africa, engineers have taken the cars on one of the most demanding road trips imaginable. The team's goal is to log as many miles in the widest variety of climates in the shortest time possible. And the Western Cape province obliges with its diversity. The team puts the cars through a torturing schedule of exercises. They collect data on every move the car makes, all to determine, with absolute certainty, that the new Porsche 911 can beat any challenge the region's unpredictable environment can throw at it. Everything takes on even greater urgency in these, the final days of testing. Each component, from a simple hood latch to a piece of software to the new seven-speed manual transmission, must function properly at any temperature or elevation.
Expectations run high. Porsche fans around the world eagerly anticipate the outcome of the project codenamed 991, and the car will soon emerge after more than five years of painstaking work. But for these engineers, many of whom have put in more than 30 years with the Porsche family, it's a labor of love. <laughs> we proudly present our new test driver. <laughs> to truly tax the new car's systems, test engineers use techniques passed down through generations of Porsche testers. These include such professional drivers as Walter Roll, a champion rally driver who test drove countless Porsche models. These Porsche engineers have spent years preparing for days like this. They also improvise new methods of testing components. After a day of testing, they splash boiling water over the headlamps to make sure they don't crack. Producing robust components is engineers' top priority. Each night, they mark the reflection of the car's headlights against the hotel wall. In the morning, they retest to make sure the car's auto leveling system works in the devastating cold. Engineers also test different versions of its important parts, ultimately choosing the prototype components that work the best. But things don't always go as planned. It's the new seven-speed transmission, the first ever of its kind. The hours of testing on the lake has frozen the transmission fluid, making it nearly impossible to shift. The functioning of such a crucial part of any vehicle, especially when hours from civilization, is vital. It's the job of these engineers not only to get the car back safely, but also to figure out how to prevent the same glitch from happening to future owners. This is a detail they'll take back to Stuttgart for further study. The team logs thousands of miles carrying out the test regimen, meticulously recording the car's performance. They seek out intense crosswinds and examine their effect on the 911 suspension system. They dive-bomb the cars into dust-choked valleys and observe the effect of sandstorms on delicate computer components and software. And, of course, they give the 911's direct injection boxer engine and its new 7-speed manual and PDK gearboxes a strenuous workout on twisting mountain roadways. Despite the brief timetable, this project, codenamed 991, forges ahead under a cloak of secrecy rivaling military intelligence. The team disguises the test cars using black tape and other camouflaging tricks so as to keep onlookers and spy photographers at bay. Project 991 will remain under wraps until the new 911 is ready to reveal. Project 991, the most advanced Porsche 911 ever built. It's been five years in the making, from design and engineering to torture testing in the far corners of the globe. Here at the end of a long process that's pitted engineers and the prototype vehicles in their charge against conditions no Porsche owner would dare drive in. They pack their gear and head back to Stuttgart, where they'll examine a mountain of test data. It's the final step in developing a robust, fine-tuned product that can meet the challenges of the real world and beyond. It all leads up to this moment. The 2012 Porsche 911.